Hello, welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching and let's get started. Many peripherals use an encoder pulse based system to record movement. By that I mean it generates an electrical signal or pulse which is interpreted by the Sim as a button press. The honeycomb trim wheel is an example of that. Whilst this is very efficient, it does have a number of disadvantages. One, you can't calibrate it, and secondly, you can't adjust the sensitivity of that particular movement. Whereas if it was on an axis, well, you could. The very clever people at Authenticate have come up with a tuning application, and this allows us to tackle this problem in a number of ways. One, we can increase the number of pulses per button press and therefore increase the amount of movement. And secondly, and for me most importantly, we can take that button and turn it into an axis so we can adjust the sensitivity and so on. So we're going to be having a detailed look at that application. The Bravo Throttle Quadrant, in my opinion, and in terms of bang for your buck, versatility and flexibility is the best throttle quadrant in the market bar none. The only time I've really heard any complaints is about the sensitivity of the trim wheel. Well, be honest, how many times have you done this? I confess I'm guilty at times of doing just that. How about you? And when you're spinning that trim wheel, you're getting very little reaction from the sim. And the reason being, well, it's pulse based. Let me demonstrate how you should be using the trim wheel. Because the trim wheel uses electrical pulses and there is a deliberate time lag between pulses, when you rotate the wheel fast, you're not getting any input or very little. And pilots in the real world would never do that to a trim wheel. However, if I move the trim wheel much slower, you can see I'm getting a large amount of movement because the individual pulse or button presses are being recorded. So slower deliberate movements will give you more input and make your trim more responsive. The app that we're going to look at is Freeware, just like everything else that Authenticate does. Their primary focus is the design of peripherals such as throttle quadrants and trims that are an exact replica of the real-world aircraft, allowing you to build a one-to-one -one likeness cockpit for selected aircraft using self-built 3D printed parts that are simply awesome in VR as well. The Authenticate tuning app is generic, so not only will it work with Microsoft Flight Simulator, but DCS and IELTS Stormovic as well, and probably other sims. The Authenticate tuning app is a new development and available directly from their website. I'll leave link in the notes below. Let's have a look at a quick summary of what it can do, and then we'll demonstrate this using the honeycomb trim wheel in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We can remap our encoder-based trim wheel to an axis. Or we can use a button multiplier which increases the number of pulses feeding into the sim. We'll look at both of those options today. There's a third option I haven't investigated which effectively increases the resolution based on a virtual axis. Authenticate have also made the install process simple and straightforward. And you can download the applications directly from their site. It's a three-step process. First of all, you need to install the .NET 5 runtime. In essence, that's the language the app is written in. Recommended you install in the order that they're shown. And use the links provided so you get the right versions. The second application is VJoy. This is the configuration utility that provides a virtual axis and buttons. Both of these applications you can install, set and forget. The only thing to take note of, there is a separate download for Windows 10 and Windows 11. It's critically important you download the right one. The third and last step is to download the tuning app from Authenticate. This will provide you with the user interface that you need to configure your peripheral. And you're done. There's also a section on the Authenticate website that offers answers to some frequently asked questions. Authenticate have developed this product internally, and it's to Authenticate you should go for product support. However, if you go to the Microsoft Flight Simulator forums, there is also an article on this, with a setup guide and so on. 
and I'll leave links to the forum article in the notes below. Once you're all installed and you open the app, this is what you'll get. Fairly self-explanatory menu at the top allowing you to save and load profiles. There's one preset for Microsoft Flight Simulator for the Spitfire. You can automatically run the program when Windows starts. This program must be running before Microsoft Flight Simulator in order to operate. We know that the Honeycomb trim wheel operates on button presses. Before going any further, we need to know what they are. We can do that in Sim by searching by input. And we can see button 22 is nose down or turning the wheel away from you. Let's now ascertain what the button is for nose up or turning the wheel towards you. Once again, search by input, turn the wheel towards us, and it's button 23. Button 22 is nose down, button 23 is nose up. We'll need to know this later on. OK, back to the application. You can load from an existing preset or you can start from scratch, which is what I'm doing. And we do that by clicking on Add Mapping. Highlight the name and let's give it a different name so we can easily identify it. I'm going to call mine Elevator Axis. More correctly, I should have called it Elevator Trim Axis. Never mind. Select your mapping type from the drop-down box. I don't want button multiplier for this. I want to map to axis. Now we need to add our input button and it says input button plus, which is button 23. Note your peripheral has to be connected in order to see the buttons. There we are selected and now input button minus. That'll obviously be the Bravo throttle quadrant button 22. Make sure you get the right buttons or it won't work. And now we're going to allocate these two buttons to a virtual axis using VJoy. And in this instance, based on information from the Authenticate site, it is the X-axis, L-axis X in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Looks like we're done, so we can now save this profile. Click on File. I'm going to choose Save As. You can choose wherever to save it. It's up to you. I've called mine Elevator Axis. That's saved. Now, before testing in Sim, let's create an Elevator Axis using the buttons. I want to clear this one first, so presets and clear all. A quick post recording note in my access profile, I should have set the sensitivity, so I've now set that to 200. And as we did last time, we'll add a mapping. I want to change the mapping type to button multiplier. There we are, that's done. Let me just give it a name so I can clearly identify it. I need to do a separate mapping under this profile for each button, so I'll call this one elevator trim up. There we are, that's done. And now to select my input button, which will be the Bravo throttle quadrant button number 23. Just to double check, it's the correct button, which it is. And now I need to allocate this to a virtual button within the VJoy. And I'm going to choose button number one. So Bravo throttle quadrant button 23 is button one on VJoy. And I'm going to turn up the number of pulses per button to seven. The threshold start and stop parameters, time between actions can be adjusted. 1000 equals one second. Time to add the second mapping or elevator trim down. Rename the new mapping so it's easy to identify. Now going to change it to button multiplier and select the input button, which in this case will be the Bravo throttle quadrant button number 22. There you are, select that. And now to select a virtual button to button number 22, and I'm going to choose button number 2. And as before, change the multiplier to 7. A bigger number should lead to faster movement of the trim wheel in Sim. Within this profile, I have two mappings, but it's still one profile. And as before, we go ahead and save it. I've now saved that, and I've now reloaded my elevator axis profile as that's the one I want to test in Sim first. And most importantly, I hit Start All before I start my Sim. All looks good, everything's running, let's jump into the Sim. First things first, Elevator Trim is currently mapped to my Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Let's just remind ourselves what it looks like in terms of responsiveness, so we can accurately gauge any improvement. We now need to modify our setup in Sim to ensure everything works properly. If you've installed everything correctly, you will see a new virtual device in your control options menu. It's the VJoy or Virtual Joystick device. It has one default profile and that's blank or empty. 
Here's an important point. If you're going to use the VJoy device for any particular action, then that action on the associated peripheral needs to be deleted. So there's no duplication. So in my case, I'm going to use the VJoy device for my elevator trim. So any Bravo throttle quadrant profile I'm using needs to have the elevator trim deleted. Otherwise, we've got duplicate signals feeding into the SIM and it won't work as expected. So I select the Bravo throttle quadrant and the profile that I want to change. In this case, I've chosen a single prop. Now I'm not going to change this profile because I may still want to use it with the default Bravo trim setting. So under the preset manager, I'm going to duplicate and create a new profile. By duplicating, it will have all the other configurations that the previous one did, and I can just modify the elevator bindings. Give it any name you want so it's easily identifiable as the one to use with the VJoy device. And making sure it's the active profile, we can now edit this profile. Because it's a trim wheel, I'm going to flight control surfaces and control trimming surfaces. There are my two elevator bindings and I need to delete these. I don't need them in this profile because the VJoy device will be carrying out these actions. Clear current output and they're gone. And now to reallocate those actions to the VJoy device. To find what I'm looking for, I'm going to search by name. I'm going to type in elevator. Remember, this is an axis now, so I'm looking for elevator axis minus 100 to plus 100. Select that. Now, because this is a virtual device, you can't use the start scanning to find the device. You have to manually select an input. Click on that and all the possible VJoy mappings are there. If you remember when we set up our profile, we set it up as L axis X. Validate and let's rename this. So once again, we can easily identify what profile we want to use it with. So we've now moved the action from a button on the Bravo to an axis on the VJoy device. We're about ready to go. All I need to do is uncheck the reverse axis on the elevator trim under the VJoy device and my elevator trim profile. Quick check to make sure my Bravo throttle quadrant's on the right profile. The VJoy, yes it is. All ready. Let's apply and save all that and let's go back into the sim. Once again, I'm using the Cessna to demonstrate the trim wheel. I'll just bring up the authentic kit tuning app so we can see these are the settings that we set for the axis. Let's now give it a go. Well, it's working like a charm. And if anything, I'd say it's marginally more responsive than the default setting. So let's now change the sensitivity and see what changes we get. I don't recommend starting and stopping the app once you're in SIM, but I'm going to do that for purposes of this demo. Let's move the sensitivity now all the way up to over 800 from 200. Click Start All again. And if it's working, we should see some significant difference. Let's now turn the trim wheel on the Bravo. And yes, a big, big difference. Let's just try nose down. Oh, that's excellent. I've now got two revolutions of the physical wheel for full nose up and full nose down. So you'll be able to set it for your preference. Back to our control menu options and let's now change to the button press option. And under the VJoy device, we'll choose the button profile. The Bravo throttle quadrant profile has no elevator access, so we can leave that as it is. Bring up the Authenticate app, and I'm now going to load the button profile. Again, I'm not sure the stability of the program changing things on the fly. OK, our new app is loaded. Start all, and it's now running. So don't forget to apply and save, and now we can head back to the sim and see if the trim wheel's working on the buttons. Just to remind us, let's bring up the Authenticate app and we set it to seven pulses per button press. Not sure what the Bravo default is, but let's give it a try. First of all, we'll try nose down. That's working fine. At our setting of seven pulses, it seems a little faster than the default Bravo. I've got a bit of movement in SIM. After I finish moving the wheel, adjusting the threshold start and stop parameters may well assist here. Well, I just tried to change the button pulse multiplier in SIM. 
and, well, the application became unresponsive. So I've exited Microsoft Flight Simulator and putting in the details now. Moving from 7 to 15 for both elevator up and elevator down. Save my changes. Now to hit start all again, make sure everything's running and let's head back into the sim and try again. Okay, here we are. And as previously demonstrated, elevator trim up and down are both set to 15 pulses, now giving it a try. As there's more pulses being fed through to the sim, no surprise that when I stop moving the trim wheel on the Bravo, the trim in sim still adjusts. Hard to tell if there's a difference, maybe slightly faster. What I can say, however, is that the access is much better and more responsive than the button press option for the Bravo throttle trim wheel. It works very well indeed. I think it's important also that I mention that this is a brand new app on the market and is under constant development and update. And the application did give me the odd problem here and there, but that's not really surprising for something so new and untested in the market. I'm confident that over a period of time, greater stability will be achieved. Nonetheless, it's a great application. For almost any encoder pulse-based peripheral, where you want to change the assignment or adjust sensitivities using either the virtual buttons or the virtual axes. And if you want your in-sim peripheral to be one-to-one -one with the physical peripheral, then this freeware app is certainly worth a look. And after all, that is what this app has been principally designed for. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this interesting and informative. Stay well and keep the blue side up. I'll see you again soon and bye for now.